Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Playful Escape podcast. My name is Kimberly. And my name is Cindy. And we are your hosts. Today, we are going to be talking about astrology, our birth charts, zodiac signs, all that fun stuff. But first, I think we should cover what is astrology. We don't really know what astrology is, to be honest. I think, I don't know. Okay, well, I googled it. Astrology is the pseudoscience that claims to divine information about human affairs and terrestrial events by studying the movements and relative positions of celestial objects. So it claims to know who you are based on celestial objects. How can you simplify that? How the stars, I guess, align to give you a prediction of who you are so that's what astrology actually is that's what google claims astrology is interesting okay so now that we've covered what supposedly it is we want to say what are astrological signs or zodiac signs or horoscopes i don't know if horoscopes fits in exactly I think our horoscope is inspired by the zodiac sign and astrological sign. Like our horoscopes tend to be like a daily prediction or prediction based on your sign. So I guess they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, Google says a horoscope is a forecast of a person's future, typically including a delineation of a character or circumstance based on the relative position of the stars and planets at the time of a person's birth yeah so it is a horoscope it's a prediction yeah it's it's, it even has like bullet points a birth chart okay which i think is a good segue for us to bring up our birth charts i looked up our birth charts last night based on the date and time and location of our births this is always going to be a little bit different for everybody for cindy Her zodiac and astrological sign is a Gemini, while mine is Taurus. You said we only want to read the beginning, which is the sun chart. The sun is supposedly the main part of who you are. Exactly. The main part of who we are and our overall personality just lumped together. Do you want to read first or do you want me to read yours first? You you can start this time. I started last time. This is our second attempt of recording this. Of course, it's normal for us now. Not that I want to keep doing it. I know. Cindy is a Gemini. People who are Gemini are usually end of May, mid to late June. So I think it's like May 22nd or 23rd to June. It's May 20th. So I guess May 21st would technically be the start date to June 20th would be the end date. Okay. Perfect. I was was kind of close. I was just off by a day or two. So Cindy's sun sign is in Gemini. In the reading that I have, it describes Gemini's as a friendly, clever, talkative, versatile, curious, perceptive, intuitive, and logical. Sometimes you can be quite contradictory, restless, two-faced, critical, and impatient. You enjoy and need work that includes a great deal of variety. You love to do several things at the same time, sometimes making you late for appointments and you arbor boredom. So here, I think most of this is accurate for you with the exception of being late and two-faced. Okay, that's the most common thing I've heard about Geminis is that they are two-faced. I don't exactly understand what that means. And I have asked Simon if he thinks that's true. He said, he's like, I don't think you're two-faced. I guess maybe if we ever elaborate what they mean by two-faced, we would understand. I am looking it up right now. Yeah, I'm not really fully sure what they're supposed to mean by that, but that is the most common thing I've heard. Here, it says that two-faced means insincere, deceitful, double-dealing, or hypocritical. Can be backstabber. So you're not that at all. Uh, Yeah, I don't think I am two-faced. Yeah, no, you also brought up that you don't think that I'm late. Like, out of everything else that agrees with me, this doesn't. But we mentioned earlier that I think the reason that I don't like being late is because we always used to be late in our past. When we had our mom drop us off at school when we were younger, we always used to get to school late. Mm -hmm. And I hated the feeling of 
being rushed or being late or getting in trouble. So I'm usually really early to things. And a lot of people usually tell me that. When I went to like a job interview, I went early. And the person who was hiring me like said, she's like, oh, I see that you came here early. She's like, I really admire that attribute about you. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, I'm not sure how much mom being late or running late for things affected you. But I was always the first one being dropped off in many of the cases. And you guys had a later entry time for school that I always was late. There were times that I would have to go to an auditorium kind of writing standards or coming up with a written excuse as to why I was late and why it was okay to be late. And I knew it wasn't okay to be late. I just hated going to that auditorium where everybody was late. You missed like the first five or 10 minutes of class just because I was late. I'm like, you're better off just letting me walk into the class two minutes late than miss the first 10 to 20 minutes of class. Not cool. Not cool. I don't think I ever had to do that really. So I don't know if it was different or it was, I don't know. I don't even know when, why or when you did that. That happened to me in middle school and in high school. In middle school, I think the time I had to be in class was 7.56, which was a really weird time. But then by the time she drove from the city where I went to school to you guys, you and Johnny had class at like 8.15 or 8.30. So she had more time to drop you guys off. I don't think school started off that late. I think it was more 8.15, if anything. Then when it got to the point where I was close, where you guys were closer, my class would start at like at 7.30 in the morning. You guys were just five minutes away from us school-wise that you were able to get dropped off and you had a 20 minute later start time which made it easier for you guys to avoid getting late but it was not fun. I only used to get late I think in elementary school. Mm. Well I guess let me start saying what your sun sign is. You are a Taurus. Mm -hmm. Taurus date I suppose is going to be April 21st to May 20th. If it's like the same time, your sun sign says you are generally strong, quiet, deliberate, practical, exacting, determined, persistent, persevering, compassionate, and loyal. You like getting your hands on your work. You prefer seeing the tangible, practical results of your efforts. These sentence structures are a little off. Yeah. Yeah. We will see more of that down the line. I find that in multiple of your sun, moon, or planet signs, mm -hmm. it talks about how you are with your possessions. And this is a line that I had previously skipped, but seeing that it's a common theme throughout your horoscope, I'm going to read it. It says, possessions and material things are usually of great significance to you. This is because you don't feel emotionally secure unless you can see and touch the objects you own. This makes much more sense in this statement than it did in the other statements when we tried recording this earlier. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. I don't remember in what section it said that you have this like need for possessions or materialistic things. I don't remember. But it was a little odd. It was really interesting. I do agree with, I think for the most of what it is that you read, as far as being practical, determined, compassionate, and loyal. And I do need some tangible object to prove whether my love or emotions are connected. And I guess that explains so much for me. Like that just opened my mind. I'm not sure you're under, in, interpreting it the same way I am. How are you interpreting that? It says that objects have a great significance to you. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to fully bring up this one thing, but you just the other day bought items from your childhood. That's nostalgia. You know, that hits nostalgia, but like those items, they mean something to you, which is why you bought them. Mm-hmm. So those items, those possessions will mean a great significance to you. 
Do you see what I mean? And I feel like you won't be missing anything in your life without them. Like if you didn't buy them, you wouldn't you wouldn't be lacking the you know childhood memories. But I feel like you having them and possessing them and being able to see them, you can remember your childhood where we've mentioned in a previous podcast that you don't remember much about your childhood. Yeah. I feel like you buying these childhood items and bringing them into your life, you'll be able to be like, wow, I remember when I used to play with this. I remember when when our dad threw these away. Yeah. <laughs> Dad does not even know that I bought these items. He knows I bought something, but he does not know what it is that I bought. But hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, he'll know what you bought. I guess, yes, tangible uh, connection to my emotions as far as like nostalgia or memories. But I also see it in a sense, I guess this is still connected to nostalgia, but like I have this crystallized object that I can pour my emotions over in a essence i have this mickey mouse wizarding hat there's a whole story connected to that and i can't bear to throw it away like those are the kind of materials that i want to keep because they have this sentimental value either a memory of what happened when i got that item who gave it to me or my pure happiness and joy of obtaining this item so that, I guess, in a way, is why I idealize these material items. Okay, I feel like we're going a little on a tangent from astrology, but now this is becoming more of a conversation, mm -hmm. which I think I prefer. But I was going to ask, I mean, I don't know if you have a memory box or anything. I know you probably keep items that mm -hmm. are connected to memories, Okay, we declutter a lot. We've talked about this. Well, you and I have talked about this. We probably haven't talked about it to the podcast, but we're constantly trying to get rid of things because we're all living in a small home for the amount of people that are in the home. Mm -hmm. And I feel like most people have a difficult time getting rid of certain things. Earlier, we were talking about material items as in clothes. For example, somebody could have a dress, not a wedding dress, but a dress that means something. So I had my prom dress that last time we decluttered, I got rid of. And some people might not have wanted to do that because, oh, that's my prom dress. I don't want to get rid of that. But I don't have that strong of an attachment to my prom dress. Like, yeah, it reminds me of the day, but I have... A lot of photos from that day, a lot of pictures in that dress. I have the boyfriend that took me to the prom that <laughs> I don't need the dress to remind me, you know? <laughs> I have many other little things. And one of my favorite things that actually mom thought of doing was removing the little brooch pin that was pinned on the side of the dress. And she told me to keep it. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't think of that. That's such a great idea. Because now I can have that pin that I can pin on anything else just to spruce it up a little bit. And actually have it in my room right now that I'm just saving it for whenever I want to wear it. Now I'm trying to look in the room to see where I can find it. I cannot find it. You can find it really easily if you look in my stuff. Okay, I'll look into it later. I was going to say, if you go look for it, you'll find it. You can show the camera. It's okay. I don't want to make too much noise walking over there because we have very loud, creaky floors. Yeah, but uh, we're not going to include this in the podcast. You can just include this in like the behind the scene features <laughs> for all the Patreons. <laughs> we can take a picture of it for later. Oh, okay. That's another way we can do that. Fine. We're thinking of uh, creating a Patreon. Well, I created a Patreon. We just haven't done anything with it yet. Share this podcast if you want us to create stickers. Because <laughs> I want to create stickers of us. Yeah. That'd be so cool. Ooh, you know what would be even better is what? if it were like a sticker of us like when we were younger and a sticker of us when we're older. That way it's childhood you and adult you. What if we get like a drawing of that? Yeah, we could. I'll look into it. Yeah. I've been thinking about it ever since you brought up stickers that we could possibly do. What are those stickers that you can like send on your phone? Like a GIF? A GIF? No, the ones like of you and Leslie. Oh, the, the Bitmojis? Yeah. Well, ever since you brought that up, I was like, that's not a bad idea, like a cartoonized version of us. And then I thought, what if it's a cartoonized version of us? But like, it could be of us now when we... And us as kids. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 
I think I have the perfect picture for us as kids. Okay. I will try to find it, but for later. I'll show it to you later. Yeah. So so this this has gotten on a little bit on a tangent, like I said. This is a proof of how unstructured our podcast will definitely be. But I kind of prefer it. I prefer the natural conversation over our structure trying to read, mispronounce, stuttering, and <laughs> who knows what else. Yeah. Should we move on to the next part of the birth charts? Did you answer my question? What was your question? I don't remember it. Do you have a memory box of some sort? No. Oh. I have a box for relaxation. Oh, yeah, I know. That box, I can probably use it for a memory box. But some of the things that I have are not... uh, They're big, so they might not fit in a small box. Yeah, like that hat's not going to be a good place to put it. I don't know. Yeah. I have photos. I'm looking at my stuff right now. I, I have small Mentos. I can see a couple of things that I can put in a memory box. So you want to talk about your moon? Yes. Your moon sign is your heart. Uh, do you want to start? Yes, because I started. So for you, your moon is in Sagittarius. What it says here for you is that you are independent, outspoken, open, generous, enthusiastic, idealistic, inspired, and optimistic. And these qualities attract many friends and acquaintances. You seem to thrive on travel, sociability, fellowship, and expressing your opinions to whoever will listen. In addition, you are adventurous, playful, freedom-loving, and always ready for a good time. Ooh, Cindy, are you ready for a good time? Honestly, I feel like that probably does fit my personality pretty well because I am really social. And I feel like this whole thing's like, oh, are you ready for a good time? It's like at any time can be a good time if you make it. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was away at school, some of my best times were just sitting in the grass with my friends and we weren't really doing anything, but it was a good time. I actually have a video of my friends. My friends like messing around in the grass. So, One of my friends was trying to toss a grape into uh, my other friend's mouth from a distance, which was entertaining. So something as, you know, mundane as spending time with friends is a good time for me. So let's cover your moon astrological sign. Yours is in Scorpio. It means that you are secretive and inclined to brood in silence over the wrongdoings that people have done either in reality or simply on your own. You find it difficult to trust people as you are suspicious of their inner thoughts and plans. So you always feel like people are going to bring something on you unexpectedly and stab you in the back, probably. You love with passion and you hate with passion. Everything is done emotionally and with intensity. You can be very jealous and possessive in your relationships. I guess that's all. I'll say for now. So, oh, 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 wait. I'm going to skip to the end, which I think we mentioned in the last one too. You are magnetic, energetic, independent, aggressive, patient, and determined. Self control of the passion is mandatory. So, we talked about this how this is your heart, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I feel like you, your heart, I want to say it has like a very thin membrane, which means it's easily penetrated. So you can love things very easily. Yeah. But when you love things so deeply, they can affect you a lot. Yes. I like the last sentence, how it says self-control of the passions is mandatory. I feel like that's something I'm sure you can relate to that you have to practice in self-control. Mm-hmm. But sometimes... You haven't had enough experience or, I mean, you probably had plenty of experiences where you've been hurt by things or people or relationships, friendships, whatever, but you've just yet to learn from them to to see a difference. Yeah, I definitely agree on that part. I don't know. It says that I am secretive. Yeah. But a lot of people have told me that I wear my heart on your sleeve. Yeah. I had an instructor literally tell me my first year as an English major, you wear your heart on your sleeve. I can read your emotions. 
like an open book. Mm. And here I was thinking I was okay, thinking that I wasn't doing anything. She's like, is everything okay? I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. I just, I don't know what it is that you're talking about. I can see that though, that you wear your heart, your emotions or your heart on your sleeve. I feel like that's pretty accurate. Even in like one of our last podcasts that we recorded, me telling you a story of how I felt in our childhood and you not knowing, you were like, oh, I didn't know that. You were, you were already like feeling and you can hear in the way you said it that you felt it. You know what I mean? I don't remember hearing this. <laughs> no, it was when I told you, it was like, oh, I used to get super excited when I would get to see you at school. The first time you heard it, because we, we had to record that podcast twice also. So the second time <laughs> you didn't hear the genuine like, oh, that's so like, what? Why did you say, you know? But the first time that we recorded it, you said it's like, oh, I didn't know. Or like, oh, what? You were like genuinely shook, surprised, in awe. <laughs> yeah. I feel very deeply and I fall very deeply. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose that's what it is. But I, yeah, I feel like the problem or the solution is like you have to be a little more guarded or you got to filter out people before you fall and stuff. Mm -hmm. In our first attempt, we talked about our sign in Mercury, which says, is the way that you think. Do you still want us to cover that one? Or do you want to just go ahead and skip that one and go to Venus, which is how we love? What is the moon then? If I thought that was love. The moon is your heart, like how you are with your heart overall. Yeah, I guess let's skip to Venus because it goes hand in hand with heart, I feel like. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So your Venus is in Gemini. It says, if you have a Venus in Gemini, it is a matter of love and romance. A person's sense of humor, intellect, and communication skills attract you more than their physical appearance. You desire a partner who is mentally stimulating, curious, one who can challenge your mind and keeps you from getting bored. Relationships where talking, sharing ideas, going places, and learning new things together are highly preferred and needed. You need a lot of social stimulation and can be a bit of a flirt. Jealous and possessive partners turn you off. You are charming, friendly, and enjoy meeting new people. You enjoy the fun and excitement of love, yet fear its obligations. Your feelings can be well expressed through speaking, through writing, or poetry, or perhaps art where you get a chance to work with your hands. Your emotions are ruled by your mind, and you may prefer intellectualizing your feelings. I would say it's, for the most part, I think it's accurate. The part where you said that you show your love through like writings or poetries and stuff like that. I used to write a lot of letters to Simon. I wouldn't call them love letters. Sometimes they're just letters. But I mean, when you keep them and you like reminisce over them eventually down the line, they kind of are love letters because they're from someone significant in your life. And he has a collection of them. I have a couple that he's written me too. But yeah, I guess that is... I guess how I show my love in a way. Mm. And I have asked Simon for a letter for like my birthday. Whenever he says, oh, I can't, I can't get you something for your birthday. I'm like, just write me a letter. It doesn't matter if you don't spend any money, just write me a letter. And he still doesn't do it. Simon, she's calling you out. Yes, yeah, Simon, I want my letter. Where's her letter? So this was Venus, right? Yes. Your Venus is also in your original zodiac sign in Taurus. If you have a Venus in Taurus, in love affairs, you are generally loyal and steady, especially if your partner is demonstrative and affectionate. You are oriented towards the sensual side of life in everything that you do, and it may show through too much weight. I still don't understand the end of that sentence. I think it basically means like it's very obvious <laughs> um, for those who are not watching because we're doing a video recording. I don't know if we're going to post this, but she just shrugged. Yeah, I have no idea. You are tremendously responsive to beauty and physical appearances and physical attractiveness of your partner is very important to you. You enjoy indulging yourself and the ones that you love, and it is too easy for you to be extravagant and perhaps put too much value into material things. So this is bringing back up the material things. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we already spoke about this, didn't we? 
the materials yes the material things but it says how you indulge yourself and the ones you love i've already talked about this right i think you talked about it in the last episode where we were talking about love and you brought up christmas Mm -hmm. yeah so i was gonna bring that up again in case i didn't mention it i feel like that's an example that you do indulge your loved ones I like to take care of them. I like to spoil them. And I usually do not like to spoil myself. But lately, you have nobody to love. You must love yourself. That's what I was going to say, because I've been living that single life for the past, I don't know how long. I've been indulging myself a bit too much. Okay. (laughs) I feel like you often have to show self-love, you know? Self-love can be a dangerous thing, though. Well... When you're going broke. Okay. One, don't go broke. Two, (laughs) I'm kidding. It takes more energy for you to be self-deprecating and that's a negative. You're giving yourself negative feelings. Whereas if you're more positive towards yourself, you're bringing yourself up. You're giving yourself confidence. You're giving yourself a push on the back. Like I can do this. Keep doing it. As opposed to where you're like, I can't do this. This is impossible. I'm never going to get there. I'm so dumb. It's Negative energy, first of all, and it takes a lot of energy for you to do that and you get a negative outcome. Whereas if you're the opposite, it's a positive outcome. Basically, you said self-love is good and much better for you than being self-deprecating because it's more effort and in the outcome for it, you'll be happier if you love yourself. Yes, basically. Okay. I wasn't saying that it's more energy, but I mean, because it could be equal energy. Mm -hmm. But the outcome of one is better than the outcome of the other. Yes. What's next? I already read your Venus, right? Yes. Did it? Didn't you? Because I already forgot. Yeah, I kind of forgot too, but I think you did. I think I said something about you being flirtatious. Which for whatever reason makes me think back to Sagittarius, which is my moon. And I know the Venus was in Gemini. I don't remember. Next planet. Which one did we want to talk about? Did we want to talk about... Saturn, which is our discipline, or Mars, which is our something else? Mars? You want to talk about Mars? Was it Mars? With how you deal with life. Oh, yeah. I think we should talk a little bit about Mars, which is how we deal with life, and maybe skip into Saturn if it kind of goes hand in hand. Wait, 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 wait. What if we stop here and we go to what I wanted to show? Fine. Which is more of a basic of your zodiac sign but it gives different descriptions fine cindy you're gonna go and take over i don't have any links for that i did send you the links is it on discord yeah okay so i'll start because you're probably not prepared for a taurus your zodiac sign your element is earth Mm -hmm. your qualities fixed don't know what that means i can open it though and find out the fixed quality I just pulled it up. A fixed quality is basically it makes it the least changeable out of all the signs. So like your personality tends to be like very, very strong, headstrong. Yeah. I was like, so I was reading through it and filtering out what was important and what wasn't. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I, it's the least changeable of all the signs. Yes. I agree. Would you agree that you are the least changeable? Oh, well, I mean, not of all the signs, but do you think you have a fixed like mentality, I suppose? Yes and no. Okay. I'm kind of both. Okay. I I guess fixed in a way, like if you have no logical reasoning behind why I should change my mind, then I'm not going to change my mind. But if you give a very thorough, rational, with evidence kind of explanation, then I will 50 to 80% most likely will change my mind. Okay. (laughs) So this website that I opened, it says it gives you like the elements, qualities, colors, your day, your ruler of like the planet ruler, mm-hmm. which is probably relating to uh, the aspects of what we're, we're talking about, like how we read about your planet in Taurus, Aries, Virgo, whatever. Yeah. And it actually gives your greatest overall compatibility with different zodiac signs. Your lucky numbers and what I want to get to is like strengths, weaknesses, your likes and dislikes. Just like super vague and just a few words. 
That's fine. Uh, before you go mm -hmm. into that, we will link both of these links, the Taurus horoscope overall and the Gemini horoscope overall one in the show notes description. So you guys can find that and look into your own signs as well. Why not? Yeah, you can change it to your own sign. For uh, the Taurus traits, your strengths are you are a reliable, patient, practical, devoted, responsible, and stable, which is what I feel like we covered in your initial sun description. Mm -hmm. Your weaknesses is that you are stubborn, possessive, and uncompromising. I want to say that I tend to be very compromising in many cases. I don't know. Okay, in like 50% of the cases. <laughs> okay. So the Taurus likes are gardening, cooking, music, romance, high quality clothing, and working with your hands. Okay. I can agree with music, but I tend to have a love-hate relationship with music. Romance, yes. If you can sweep me off my feet, huzzah to you. Uh, high quality clothes, yes and no. I mean, if the quality is good, they will probably last me longer, but I'm not obsessed with clothing. Uh, working with my hands, yeah, sure. If I bake, I'd rather use my hands than use any of the tools, of course. I don't garden, but I don't really like getting my hands dirty with nature like that. And cooking, not really cooking. We prefer the baking, as you said. I prefer the mm -hmm. baking, yes. All right, so now your Taurus dislikes. Oh, no. Sudden changes, complications insecurity of any kind, and synthetic fibers. I'm pretty sure I would wear clothing that is synthetic. I just don't know. I mean, I'm not going to nitpick those. Yeah, I don't know why they said like so specific, but what about the rest? I don't like sudden changes. It's very upsetting to me, but I try to be adaptable in that kind of case. Complications, yes, I hate it when situations get very complex. And insecurities, I tend to have a lot of insecurities, which tends to drive me mad. All right. Do you want to read mine or do you want me to read mine? I can read yours. Based on the link that you sent me, your element is air. Your quality is malleable. So you're kind of shapeable or easily swayed. I don't know if you read the colors. I might have tried to. Yours were green and pink, if that helps. Yours is light green and yellow. Okay, that's funny. Your favorite day or your day is Wednesday. I don't think you read that for me. I don't remember if you did. It's Friday and Monday for you. I agree with the Friday, though. I cannot stand Mondays. We're recording on a Friday and we release all of our podcasts on a Friday. So obviously Friday is my day. Your overall compatibility signs are Sagittarius and Aquarius. Don't know what they mean, though. So I'm going to just skip forward. Simon is a Sagittarius. So born in December? Yeah. It's, uh, what's before December? <laughs> November. November. Yeah, so November to December. Okay. Uh, your lucky numbers are 5, 7, 14, and 23. Do you agree with any of those numbers? No, they're off by a little, but okay. Keep going. Okay. So strengths of a Gemini. Gentle, affectionate, curious, adaptable, Ability to learn quickly and exchange ideas. I don't know if I have an ability to learn quickly. I have an ability to pick things up quickly, but learn probably not. Or maybe maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. That's a possible option. Like, yes, maybe that's true. What was the last one again? Exchange ideas. I feel like that's pretty good because I feel like that's basically this podcast. You're always my bounce board. Yeah, so we're always talking about things we want to do, things we don't want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your weaknesses. And I can say that this is mostly correct. Your weakness is nervous. So like being nervous, maybe being inconsistent and being indecisive. You're not inconsistent. I will say that right away. You tend to be very consistent and you're very dependable in that kind of case. Nervous, maybe, depending. Like, we get nervous when we have to record that kind of stuff. Or nervous if you have to do something. Like, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure if I, I get nervous to record. I don't think that's entirely it. Because, like you said, it feels a lot like a conversation. So I don't feel like, oh my god, I can't do this. I can't do this. I suppose what I'm thinking is, like, anxiety. And I feel like I get 
anxiety when I am nervous and I don't get anxiety before we're doing this or anything. Definite weakness that you do have. And I will always attribute to this because it annoys me is you being indecisive. But you're only saying that in the aspects of food. You are not helpful. You're supposed to be helpful. I mean, I guess that's my only flaw. My food options. <laughs> Your only flaw? Yeah, I'm perfect otherwise. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're perfect. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> you're not perfect. As Simon. Do you want to bring up that comment that we made about the ranking of the siblings? What ranking? The torta. Oh, <laughs> oh so <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess I, I want to bring this up because I think it's super funny. As our mom was listening to our first podcast, she made the comment of like how my sister was going over how she's the oldest I'm the middle and my brother is the youngest. And there's usually this connotation to middle children being forgotten by, you know, their parents or others. And um, my mom is a middle child. I'm the middle child. So she was like, oh, don't worry about it. That just means that you're the best part of the sandwich. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, Kim is the top part of the of the bread. You are the ham and your brother is the bottom bread. It's like, so you're the delicious part, the ham. And then my sister was all like, she's like, what? Kim was all like, but I don't want to be bread. I want to be something else. So she was like, okay, you can be a uh, bolillo, which is a different type of bread, but a bread that we prefer eating alone sometimes. And then you can put, that's kind of hard because unless you fully cut the bolillo in half, you and Johnny would still be the same part of the bolillo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just assume in this case, we cut the bolillo entirely in half. Yeah, and then I would still be the middle part. She would be the beans and the cheese. Yeah, so that was saying if we made a torta or, you know, concoction for us that is just like something really simple of like beans and cheese. Yeah. I like the simple things. A torta of frijoles and queso, like that's good. It is good. I don't need anything more complex. I don't need the tortas with lettuce, tomato, ham, avocado. I don't need all that. An egg, whatever you want to throw in there. Like, I don't need all that fancy stuff. I think that's what makes you kind of indecisive because you like such simple foods and we want to go out and we're hungry and you're like, just bring me anything. We're like, you're the one who is picky with the food. Tell us what you want to eat so we can go eat. I guess in the sense of food, I am a homebody in the sense that I would prefer to eat anything that could be made at home. So I don't find value in going out to eat. That being said, actually, the fact that you said being a homebody relates to your horoscope and zodiac sign very nicely because I'm going to go into the Gemini likes. Oh, okay. Geminis like music, books, magazines, chats with nearly everyone, and short trips around the town. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, yes, in some aspects, short trips. Emphasis on short. If anything's too long or it's just taking me away from home too much, I don't really like. You don't like going to the store with me for one quick errand, say ice cream, and it's five minutes away from our house. I don't know. It depends. I think it really depends. First of all, it's not only it's like, oh, do you want to go? It's do you have time to go? Sometimes I don't have time, so I can't go. But sometimes, yeah, I would like to go to the store really quick just to get something or just do something, especially since that's the only thing we can do right now when we go out is just go to the store. But your sense of going to the store can be extended, whereas... I'm used to Simon's definition of going to the store, which is literally walk in, grab what you want, let's get out of here. <laughs> literally, that, that's what we do. We literally walk in, zoom through the aisles, find what we want. He checks the price of what I'm spending because he's the one that usually pays. And he's like, all right, we can afford this. Let's go. Or if he can't afford it on his own, he asks me, oh, do you have money so you can you know, help me pay? So then we organize as we are making our way to the checkout. But yeah, that's typically what it is. It's just get in, get your stuff, get out. Yeah. Should I move on to the last thing about a Gemini? Oh, yeah, sure. The Gemini dislikes. 
And I think this might also connect to you being a middle child. Okay. But it says a Gemini dislikes being alone, being confined, repetition, and routine. I can be alone. I don't have a problem with it. But if it comes to preference, yeah, I probably would prefer not to be. Confined? I don't think anybody likes to be confined. And what was the last one? Repetition and routine? Yes. Okay. I think a routine is a good thing to have. But I do like the flexibility of being able to change a routine. Because I I suppose this is true then. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't want to have to be doing the same thing every single day. Like say, for example, my routine was to wake up every morning, take a shower, brush my teeth, use the restroom and clean the house. If I were living alone, I would do the first three things of shower, brush teeth, use the restroom without a doubt because I have to or I would need to. But if I'm the only one living in that room, house, whatever, I don't think I need to clean up every single day if I'm doing it every single day. I don't think I'm making a mess to that extent. Mm -hmm. Granted, you can do some night like, dusting and sweeping because stuff happens where you're going to make messes, but I'm not going to need to deep clean every single day. So there's going to be, you know, some time where I'm like, I don't want to clean today. I can wait and clean tomorrow and there will be more to clean. I don't want to stick to a routine where I may feel like it's not necessary to do. I will say one last thing mm -hmm. about a Gemini's. This is a how to attract the Gemini woman. <laughs> where did you open that? <laughs> <laughs> it's on the same link you sent me just so I kept scrolling okay if you want to attract a Gemini woman you will have to be able to keep up with her dual nature she can be passionate and gentle one moment and aloof and distant in the next this is a result of her natural born tendency to stay safe and on a distance from other people, prepared to run off into the carefree love story that awaits her just around the corner. This is an enthusiastic, witty, int uh, intellectual, and soft-spoken woman, while at the same time, extremely open-minded and always ready to meet someone new. Wow. I know, I just threw that in there. You sent me the link? <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's funny. I just kept looking. I think it's at the very bottom of that page. Yeah, I found the how to attract a Gemini man, and then I kept going and I found it. That's funny. I, I don't know. I found the one for the woman, the Taurus woman. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Read it. It says, if you want to seduce, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about Taurus wanting to be seduced, but it's I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> it's all of, like super sensual. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, if you want to seduce a woman born her son in Taurus, you need to appeal to her sense of romance. Taurus women want to be courted and slowly seduced, even when they have already decided to enter a relationship with someone. They need things to move slowly and will rarely jump into se a sexual bond quickly and without thinking long and hard about her choices. A Taurus woman longs for true love and security, and it is unlikely that she will give into her desires and instincts quickly. And if someone wishes to have her heart, they will have to spend a lot of time and energy into the game of winning her over and making her feel comfortable. Okay, yours sounds very problematic. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a troublemaker. <laughs> Only when it comes to romance. I don't think that's going to bring comfort to those that are looking for the romance with the Taurus woman. That just means that I want to be swept off my feet. Since we've technically already spoken about love, I think I'm just going to throw this in. I think anybody wants people to put in the work. Oh yeah, of course. So I don't think that's specific to tourists. No fit. No, yeah. it's, it's not. It's not. But I, I just find it here is like, Wanting to be courted and slowly seduced. I think love takes time. We should have addressed this maybe in the last podcast. If, like mm -hmm. we believe in love at first sight. But sometimes that's not exactly what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -mm. So work hard to get in your relationships, people. I was thinking of a completely, you were saying work hard. I was like, instantly work hard, play hard. No, you have a different mentality than I do. I'm not sure you're going to be comfortable with people listening to this part of you and this podcast where you have a bunch of family, especially mom who listens. Oh, we didn't say hi, mom. Hi. Well, we said hi to you in the last recording of this podcast. I think that's it for this episode, unless you want to cover anything else. No, I think we got a good basis of supposedly who we are. 
Did you want to do like the summary like we did last time where basically, well, I don't know if we fully covered a little bit of what we said in the last one, how it covered that we were like, we had different personalities, but that our personalities complemented each other. No, we did not discuss that here, but we are taking these readings of our birth charts and our astrological zodiac signs with an open heart and open mind, but that does not define us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I know that there's a lot of people who fully and firmly believe in all of these readings. We are just using this as a way for you all to get a better understanding of us as a person and if they relate to us or not. Friends and family, if you know us very well and there's things that you think don't accurately define us who we are, just know that we are not confined to these readings. No, and I feel like that's something that I said earlier too, that the different parts of the sun, moon, earth, (laughs) Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, whatever, they sometimes give different descriptions of like different zodiac signs. I think what it's basically trying to say is you are not limited to just being a Taurus or just being a Gemini. You have different aspects of you that are different parts of other people. We are not just one thing. We are not just one person. We are not just one personality. We are many. So I suppose that's what I'm what I'm taking away. I think that the zodiac signs are a label to kind of confide us in and it is up to us to depict that and see is that accurate or not and it can create a kind of sense of community with one another if you say oh i'm a taurus and you find a bunch of other tauruses or you say oh i'm a gemini and you find a bunch of gemini's either your personalities will really really connect well or it'll there'll be a clash depending on that but it's just a label we are not fully identifying as these labels i'm not sure i i actually know any other gemini's i know a bunch of tauruses do you (laughs) yeah oh i actually know a couple actually they're nice I think that's it for this podcast episode. Yeah. Go ahead and support us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Follow us on all of those handles. Our username is at a playful escape. And send us an email if you have any recommendations on topics or things that we want to talk about. If you want to give us a review or just say, hey, I love your podcast and give us feedback on that. Go ahead and send us an email. Our email is a playful escape at gmail.com. If you want us to start a Patreon and get stickers. access to possible stickers, let us know. And we're going to go ahead and try to figure all the logistics out for that one. I am Kimberly signing off. And I am Cindy signing off. Bye. Bye, everyone.